Ah, I remember what I was going to talk about. So, yeah, phones, the, the systems are being hacky, whatever. <clears throat> it's all good in my book. Um, so what I want to talk about, I wanted to talk about, um, I want to, I want to wish my ex a happy birthday in heaven. Um, his birthday was nine, was, um, 11, nine, which was yesterday. Yeah. And his death. Um, so my ex was really hardcore snowmobile. All right. And, uh, like that was his freedom. Okay. And, you know, I never hated the man. All right. We made beautiful children. I never hated him. Uh, what I did hate was the alcoholism and the drug, the drug use that, that ruins people. Okay. Um, spirits jump in there and, um, or demons jump in there, take over. Um, but the thing is like, uh, so I think he had like sclerosis of the liver or something bad. Cause he was like, my girls told me that at one point he was coughing up blood and stuff. So, um, <laughs> you can look up the article. He died on Moosehead Lake, which was like one of his favorite places. Okay. Now how I look at death is, uh, I know it's really sad, but, uh, I think he would be what 59 now, or is he going to be 60? I don't know. So anyways, um, Moosehead Lake. So we we've, we've crossed that a bunch of times and uh like he knows he knows all the places okay and the thing is uh like when i used to go snowmobiling with him i rescued him so many times like uh i found him one night he left and i was like oh my god where did he's not coming back so i went out on my sled i think this was yeah this was a main and uh i found him like passed out on the side of the trail and you know just chilling and i was like what are you doing wake up and uh yeah a lot of times i rescued him so one time, uh, he was so drunk, he, he flipped his sled over in somebody's driveway, and uh, I had to literally lift up. It was an 800 sled, and I had a, I don't know, I, I have adrenaline superpower when I need it, I guess. <laughs> so I flipped it over. I'm like, what the hell are you doing? You want to get, you want to get drunk and driving charges or something? And this guy's looking out his window like, what the hell's going on? And I had to, like, flip over the sledding. I had to push him back on the sled, and... Like, it was just around the corner, but still, it was really bad. But, um, so I don't understand why, you know, I understand, like, l leaving somebody, like, all right, so she, supposedly she went on the shore, if she didn't know where he went, and maybe it was a good thing that she didn't go and follow him, because maybe she would have went into the water, too, um, but I don't know, for me, I wouldn't have, like, I would have scoped it out, like, I would have went on my sled and checked it out, and, um, but she didn't know, she doesn't know the lake, so she didn't know the the weak spots and stuff, I guess. I don't know. But she just stayed, she just stayed on the shore waiting for him to come back and he never came back. So, um, but the thing is with that death, all right, if you're, if you have cirrhosis of liver, it's like final stages or whatever the hell was wrong with him. You don't want to be like, you don't want to be like, um, like sitting in a hospital, just, you know, withering away and having them do all their their stuff to you you don't you don't want that so the way I feel is like if you die doing something you love then it, it's it's a better way out that's how I look at it um so you know drowning I don't know how that is I don't know if that's a quick death or not but um but anyways when it was really weird when they pulled him out like she had his wet stuff in the her dining room um for a really long time and like I guess he had stuff in his pockets and he had like Bibles in there in his pockets which I thought was really strange I was like wow what are these Bibles doing in his pockets so who knows what was going through his head but um you know she she was a real she, she probably drove him to it you know like they were always like they were always like fighting and I didn't, when I was married to him, I just, I try not to fight with him, but, um, she was like a nag and nagging him constantly. And like every single time I pulled up to the driveway, um, uh, she was like glaring at me with hatred. I was like, I never did anything to this woman. I even tried to, I even tried to help her clean the house when that happened. Cause I felt bad cause my kids like mess it up or whatever. She messes it up more, but and her son's disgusting. My daughter, Holly, would tell me stories like she'd clean the whole bathroom and then they'd go in and just trash it all, you know, leave poop in the toilet, not, you know, just disgusting things like that. But anyway, so I even tried to help her, but I don't know why I did that. 
Then when she went to court, she was saying something about, she used the term with me about her letting me see Holly, saying that she thinks it would be cruel and unusual punishment. Okay. Who uses that term? Uh, that's weird. Okay. So now everybody's saying, well, they probably took the 40 grand because he owed so many, so much money to the IRS and he owed so much money, blah, blah, blah. Well, no, you can't, that is beneficiary money. You can't, you can't take that. You can't take that to no, none of the government can take that. Okay. So yeah, there's a statute that I pulled up in New Hampshire that says they, they can't take that. So, so anyway, so that's her. And, uh, I don't know. In that situation, I probably would have. I think I. W I don't know. I don't know. I think I would have went out and scoped it out and see what what the hell like follow follow his tracks and see what the hell happened. I. I don't think I. I don't think I could just sit on the shore, and wait for him to come back. I just. I don't think I could do that. Uh, so, but yeah, there's so many times where I felt like, with him, um, it was like, putting us in danger, like going across. Um, like going across mushy lakes with the children on with the sled and I never wanted to do that. I got to the point to the I got to the point where I was like, no, I'm not crossing lakes, uh I'm not crossing lakes anymore. Um and, you know, we get stuck on the side of the mountain one time and I thought that we were gonna be stuck there all night and he was like he had this like thing where it was like he thought he was invincible, like everything's gonna be okay. But you know, you get into these scary situations, you gotta think about survival and I was always that that way I was always thinking about survival you know and uh uh so many times getting stuck with them when they were drunk and just nightmares nightmares with the snowmobilers okay one time we crashed uh my friend this guy Johnny he's to be a hot shit in Kingston he crashed his sled and everybody left and I was the only one because uh I was like the girl in behind and uh so I saw him crash and I was like I was like, don't worry, they'll come back. It's just going to take a while for them to realize that we're not here. And I said, just don't worry. And he was flipping out because they were drunk. And yeah, so uh, yeah, I look back at a lot of dangerous situations. One night, one night they were on a river and they didn't even realize they were on the river. And I was at the top of the bank and I was like, guys, you're on the river, you know. And they're like, ah, ha, 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 they didn't care, you know. So stupid shit like that. And um, a lot of dangerous situations, so... Yeah, and one time we were in um, Moosehead, we were we were in Greenville, and some kid, they were racing, I guess he was racing with his friend, and um, and he smashed into a log, um, like a log mound that was like covered with snow, I didn't, I guess they didn't know it was a log mound, but when he hit it, and the kid was just laying there, we came up on it, and we drove like so fast to get help, but the guys, the guys, the, 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 the emergency guys were like old people. Like old men, and they're like, ah, oh, I gotta get the sled out of the shed. And they weren't in any rush because they probably have to deal with this all the time. And so he was like, get the sled. And oh my God, the kid could have died. But um, so I think he got rescued, but I think he had like a, a ruptured spleen or something like that. But we were first on the scene. That was scary. And then all these other people came from Canada and stuff helped. And then there was a time that my daughter went off the, went off the um, trail because. You know, with the men, it's like, oh, I got to do 200 miles a day it, 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 to get my, you know, my fix. And if I don't do 200 miles a day, then it's not a good day, I guess. But we were taking out young children, all right? My daughter, my daughter, I don't know how old she was then, my daughter Haley. And she went off the, I was behind her and she went off the trail into this ditch. And I was like, oh my God, and she just disappeared. All you see is her little head sticking up. She was okay. But she went into the ditch. And so we couldn't, you know, we had to like get people to help us like, drag the sled out and so many things. It was like a lot of uh, dangerous situations. So yeah, snowmobiling is not any sport. Snowmobiling is you don't mess around. Okay. You got to know your shit. You got to know the terrain. I used to get snow blindness where the trail would, um, the trail would like disappear. Snow blindness, like everything looks the same. So I, I used to have to start wearing like special um, glasses underneath. So I didn't, so that didn't happen to me. But yeah, snowmobile, you don't mess around. All right. That's bad. It's we were in back country where like you could where you could probably never see people for days. So yeah, I was always the one that cr to carried all the survival stuff. So because I had like I had huge um huge um what do you call those the compartments like huge what do they call those bags you know the saddlebags 
I had huge saddlebags on my sled, so I carry like enough stuff to like if I had to survive the night, I could do it. So, anyways, that's the story of snowmobiling, and uh, I do miss it. Uh, I thought I'd get my sled back, but no, it was stolen, and then it was sold, probably for drug money. Who knows? But uh, I did contact the Weird Police about it. I'm the only one that has the title to it, and I guess it's long gone by now. Who cares? But, yeah, people just get away with stealing um, and selling stolen property, so that's fine. Okay, bye, people.